be flexible. Yeah, of course. Hi, welcome to I Tried to Eat My Phone. I am Karen Jaworski, and I am joined by my very awesome friend, Jendi, today. And we're going to talk about music. And I have to say, Jendi um, maybe have, is one of the few people I know who has probably been to more concerts than I have. <laughs> Far, you probably have like lapped me a few times Ugh, with yeah. concerts. But um, uh, first question: What um, is there a CD or like sounds like old people? But is there a CD <laughs> that you've ever owned that you were embarrassed to own, but you liked it? Oh, for sure. <laughs> um, Tell me about those. Trying to, gosh, uh, I'm sure there have been. Um, let's see, I never owned Nickelback, so that's good. Um, <laughs> We're clear on that one. Yeah, gosh, I don't even think I owned Hanson. I, you know, I don't, trying to think, maybe the Crash Test Dummies, like I owned that cassette maybe back in the day, like the mmm -mm guy. Yeah. But the yeah, that's, or the cassette? Yeah, oh, I it was a cassette. I was late to the CD. The game. <laughs> yeah, I was. I had to save up my money and I got it. I got a disc man at Sears. <laughs> and it wasn't even like the yellow one that could like, you know, sustain a little wobbliness. It was the black one where you like had to just leave it on your desk with your headphones, couldn't move. Yep, yep. Yeah. So it was the original Sony <laughs> Discman, but I bought it like in the nineties. I was very, I was very late to that game. <laughs> <laughs> when, when, when you were younger, I mean, were your parents big into music? I mean, how did you get into <laughs> Amazingly, music? no, they weren't. Um, I remember my first like uh, record player played 45s and I pretty much listened to the Muppets. And then I, you know, <laughs> segued into Annie, the, the soundtrack to the movie Annie. Uh -huh. And then I think my first like real cassette, like by a real band that you could hear on the radio was, um, gosh, um, Musical Youth, Youth, Past the Duchy. That, mm. whatever that album, that cassette was. Um, uh, yeah, so and amazingly, no, amazingly, I didn't really grow up with a lot of music. I mean, my parents listened to like, you know NPR or whatever they'd listen to their like Fiona Fiona Ritchie like the whatever was it whatever show she had on uh the the W not WBEZ what did we have in East Lansing then? Uh, yes, yeah. no I think so I'm trying to remember I can't yeah. recall yeah but um I just loved music my brother listened to a lot of music he was a big influence four years older um, so yeah, I listened to like Van Halen when I was like in elementary school, <laughs> but um, yeah, I would say not a lot of music as a kid, but I do remember in high school, you and I were going to go to a Grateful Dead show at the palace. We were, I know. Hey, your Jen, dad was on call, that? so we couldn't buy musical youth. Musical youth. Oh, yeah. yes. Okay. Awesome. <laughs> Hey, that, uh, oh, wow, Jeez, that, that takes me in the way back machine. Yeah, <laughs> for sure. Wow. Um, I, you know, I was thinking like, yeah, so we were, yeah, we had talked about going, now, how many times did you see the dead? No, I actually never saw them when Jerry was alive, so zero. Okay. Mm -hmm. wow. Yeah. Because I saw them um, at the Palace of Auburn Hills. It was like the touch of great five, <laughs> I think. Oh, uh, sort of ninety-five, maybe. Yeah, and uh, I just remember walking into the Palace of Auburn Hills, and it was like dark in there, and uh, the concert had just gotten started, and we walked in, and it was dark, and all of a sudden, this purple light went on the stage, and you just saw this white hair, and it was like, wow, all right. <laughs> That's him. Awesome. <laughs> so, uh, so I saw that that one time because didn't when did he die? Like ninety six maybe, huh? I I, th I think it was ninety five. 
Yeah, it, I think it was shortly that. after that because yeah, I saw I saw him on that tour, maybe like July or June that year, and yeah, and then he was gone. Yeah, he died that. in August of '95. Yeah, his last okay. show, or their last show, was the the proper Grateful Dead was in Chicago. Yeah. I wasn't like, did you ever see uh, like Bill Lush and friends? And stuff? Oh, yeah, we, we saw them a couple times out here. Okay, yeah, I've seen a lot of the dead offshoots. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What uh, so I want to hear more about. I know that you are a huge fan of Mo. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and so how many times have you seen them? Um, 120, 130 times, maybe. Wow. Wow. <laughs> yeah. Is there is there one of their shows that sticks out more than the others or a couple of them that stick um, out more than the others? Yeah, I mean the seventh house in Ferndale, I think. No, Magic Bags in Ferndale. Seventh house is in Pontiac. I saw them a couple times and I would go by myself because I just really like their music and it was at graduated college, um, had moved to East Lansing, was living with a roommate. And um, just didn't, like, you know, just really was involved in like going, I used to go to see live shows all the time, like the small planet, I'd see acoustic hookah there or whatever. Um, yeah, <laughs> like, it brings back all these memories. But um, yeah, I would just, I would just kind of check out bands. I'd go to the Magic Bag a lot in Ferndale. Um, yes, yeah, I mean, so I'd say out of Mo, maybe one of the earlier shows, or I really liked Mo Down when I used to go to upstate New York for their like Labor Day weekend um, festival. That was just always fun. Um, yeah. I haven't done that in probably a decade though. Just haven't <laughs> haven't been able to to do that much anymore as I've grown older. I no longer have a job. I have a career. And uh, yeah, <laughs> I I remember. I don't know if I told you this last time we were doing the other interview, but when, there was a time. I think I was like thirty, and we went. We had seen. I had seen widespread panic like a bunch of times. And when I went to one particular show, my friend Tim leaned over to me and he goes, "Uh, I gotta sit down." And I was like, it was when they were in one of their like, you know, massive like riffs and stuff. And it was like going on for like half an hour. And I was like, we were only 30 and we were like, I I need to sit down somewhere. It's like <laughs> too <laughs> so much. That was when I knew like, we were kind of on the other end of like the jam band concert scene. Like I I mean, because I always loved um I saw the Almond Brothers many, many times and loved that. And, but now sometimes too, when there's like someone coming to town, I'm like, well, where are they playing? What time is it at? No, for <laughs> like, sure. I feel like it's such an old lady. I'm like, 10 o'clock, are you kidding me? Like that's when I go to bed. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I hear you. Yeah, I mean, honestly, I don't, well, nobody really goes to concerts anymore. <laughs> Sad to say. Well, no, yeah. So what do you think? What do you think it's gonna look like after this? Um well, I mean, I've seen those things where people are in like orbs pods or something. Yeah. Like, clear uh, tents. But, yeah. Yeah. What do you think it's gonna look like after this? Even after we get a vaccine, do you think it's gonna change very much or what do you think? Yeah, I know some vaccine. bands, including Mo, have tested out like the drive-in experience. Mm -hmm. maybe more of that um I who knows I don't really know I just feel for all these music venues that I mean the Riv the Vic the Aragon yeah. you know Park West what you know they, they cannot pack those venues any anymore or they, yeah. they can't even sell there's nothing going on right now but in the future I I don't know um I was really excited to see New Order and the Pet Shop Boys mm -hmm. um it was supposed to happen in September and it got pushed back to October, 2021. Um, mm -hmm. I was supposed to see the dead with, you know, obviously the, um, 
minus Jerry, obviously, but the dead in, um, at Wrigley this summer, that clearly was canceled. I, I don't know. I really yeah. don't know what's going to happen. I mean, just because yeah. those venues are packed. Well, that's what, when you think about like, uh, you know, World Music Theater, whatever it's called now, and like all those places, know. even though they're outdoor, I mean, you were like, I mean, it was like packed in. Yeah. And, you know, that's kind of where their money came from was how many people they could pack in there. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah, it's unfortunate that it's going to be a while until we, or, or yeah. who knows if ever, like that we're kind of. I mean, a lot of live streamed shows are happening, you know, at these, you know, drive-in events. You can buy the stream. It's not the same, but it's something. I mean, I yeah. like even this summer, um, you know, certain band members from Mo were like just kind of doing a, a Zoom. Like you could you could purchase you know, 10 logins and a musician, one of them, I saw Rob, the bass player, um, you know, just playing a little concert, but just him and, you know, nine other Zoom feeds. So very small, very intimate, but I mean, they need to make a buck, right? <laughs> so. Oh yeah, and maybe, you know, I feel like during the pandemic, uh, I always think of like my mom uh, would, say one time when I was frustrated about something when I was a kid she said well what's the work around and and yeah. so I, I think about that a lot during the pandemic like well what's the work around and so I feel like a lot of these bands like they're finding a new like place to kind of mm -hmm. or a new a new format or a new way of like getting out there and and it is almost you're right I mean kind of more intimate yeah yeah <laughs> yeah um what have you ever been to a concert where you did you ever leave a concert because it was bad the uh, probably I geez I'm just trying to think of all the small shows I've been to just even around you know Chicago um mm -hmm like at Shubas or something, you know, whether it wasn't like a big ticket, it, you know, you just yeah. like, I, yes, probably. Can I recall who? No, I yeah. think I do love iron and wine. And I think I did go to a show there on a Friday and it was a long week and they're just chill and mellow. And I did not off a bit, but that's not leaving the show, but I was just very comfortable. <laughs> Sorry. Don't, don't spit it out. <laughs> that's hilarious. But um, I, yeah, I don't, I just love music. I love live music. Um, yeah. yeah. Favorite band I have never seen because I mean, death, but Led Zeppelin, I would have loved to have seen them had I been born earlier. <laughs> so yeah, my favorite band that, I, that I've never seen, definitely Led Zeppelin. Yeah. Have you ever tried to go see like uh, when Plant was kind of touring and stuff? Like Page and Plant, yeah. yeah, I saw that. Plant. Yeah, it's just not the same. I mean, yeah, nothing to compare it to, but I yeah. it's not the same. Yeah, yeah. And sometimes I joke if I have ever taught my kids anything, it's appreciation of of Led Zeppelin and Bridget's currently wearing a Foo Fighters T-shirt, so <laughs> like. I feel like we're scoring in some areas here so nice. <laughs> um what what's what's your favorite venue in chicago to go see uh mm. live music there, there's a lot of good ones yeah there are i think park west is beautiful it's just intimate i've been mm. to so many shows at the aragon i think their sound just sucks but you go there <laughs> um i like shuba's again small um yeah, I, I don't know. There's so many. Uh, I've seen a lot of shows at the Riv. A lot, a mm. lot of shows. Martyrs. Um, yeah. Gosh, I don't even know. It's been so long. <laughs> um, my, my, first, uh, my first apartment was like uh, in Chicago after I graduated from college was right near Martyrs. And oh, okay. We, we would just 
wander by there and be like, oh, we should go check out who this is. And I'm sure there's stuff that we saw that we were like, that ended up being big and we didn't, we didn't remember at the time. Right, but. yeah, for sure. Yeah, I don't, yeah. gosh, I'm trying to think a favorite venue. I think, you know, each, each venue that I've been to has like a little, you know, something that, that you're attracted to. Like I said, the Aragon, I think the sound sucks unless you're right in the sweet spot, but it's always yeah. fun, you know? And then you, you let out on Lawrence and you're like super hot, even in the winter, cause it's just heated and people are sweaty <laughs> and gross. Um, yeah. So I don't know if I have a favorite Chicago venue really. Yeah. Has, has there been a band that you, um, you know, that you're that person where you're like, I saw them when no one else knew who they were and then they got big. So what, what's a band that, have you seen a band where you're like, I was in on the ground level? Um, no, <laughs> I guess <laughs> maybe, um, so there's this band I liked years ago. I'm sure, yeah, gosh, uh, they're called Clap Your Hands, Say Yeah. Um, and oh, they, yeah. yeah, they were fun. Gosh, I don't even know how many years ago this was, 10, 12 years ago, maybe more. Anyway, they were playing at Shuba's and they actually opened for the national. So I saw the national at Shuba's, but I didn't go to see the national. I went to see the opening band. So that was kind of, you know, thinking back, wow. Yeah, that's, a small. that's like, that's a yeah. tiny venue, so. Yeah. Um, How fun. I don't even know. Yeah. I can't think yeah. right on the spot. Sorry, I'm trying to think. I'm sure I've oh, that's right. probably seen someone or something, but I can't recall. <laughs> yeah. I know John gets annoyed because I'm always like, oh, you know, because Coldplay came here 20 years ago and they played at a small venue here. And I was like, oh, I heard about this band from England and we should go check them out and a friend and I went <laughs> and the next time I saw them you know. was you know like 18 years later and we took the girls and it was at like you know Seahawks Stadium <laughs> like, oh, gosh. That's funny. so I was like doing the whole dorky old lady thing where I was like you know what 20 years ago I saw them when there was like nobody there and <laughs> right yeah that's cool <laughs> like, I was that person um what, um, when you think about music that, uh, you know, there's such an emotional content to music, like wh what are your go-tos for, you know, either having a bad day or a good day? Wh what are your go-to music choices for those moments where you're like, I just need something to either lift me up or something that I want to just wallow in sorrow, <laughs> like, yeah wow well i think my all-time one of my all-time favorite like my desert island discs is fat albert rotunda by the by herbie hancock mm -hmm. um it's just amazing um i saw herbie hancock i think open for the dave matthews band in virginia like in the 90s but wow. the one time, yeah, and uh, it just, it's such a great disc. I recommend it to everyone. Mm -hmm. um, and then I really love New Order. Like I cannot not listen to New Order and not get into it. Like I, I love it. Um, and then just to get moving, like, I don't know, geez. Uh, I don't even, I can't even think. That's my, my get moving music. Like my go-to is if I'm having a bad day is earth, wind and fire. Like that's just. Can't go wrong with that. that. Yeah, for sure. Um, yeah. yeah, I'm trying to think. I love the police. Mm -hmm. You can't listen to the police and not love it in my opinion. Yeah. Um, like I said, Led Zeppelin, clearly yeah. low. <laughs> Um, yeah, I, gosh, I can't think of any like specific songs right now. Yeah. It'll come there, to me. Uh, <laughs> yeah. 
you'll call me in the middle of the night. Right. You know. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, but I was thinking too, like there's, um, there's definitely some bands and uh, songs that just great on me. And so what would you say is like stuff that grates on you or a genre or a band or? I don't what, really care for country music. Mm -hmm. I mean, I like Johnny Cash. Like that's, I mean, like the, the newer country stuff, I just, I don't, maybe I'm just hasn't, I haven't really been exposed to it very much, but I can yeah. kind of take a pass on country music. Yeah. Um, yeah, not really my thing. <laughs> and yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Have you ever, uh, speaking of country music, like I, so I saw um, Garth Brooks many years ago because the friend had an extra ticket and she was like, do you want to go? And I was like, not really. Heard he's but, quite okay. the entertainer though. It was the, one of the best shows I've ever seen. Well, yeah, I bet. I mean, and those are kind of fun when you go to a show and you're like, wow, like you're kind of surprised by like, oh, that was actually really cool. So what what's the show that surprised you? Like when you went to see someone where you're like, whoa, wait a minute. I oh, saw awesome. Coldplay at UIC. And I remember it was because it's a university, there's no alcohol, which was interesting for a music venue. But um. <laughs> I was, I was very impressed because it was so polished because I had been, you know, going to like to see smaller bands at little venues traveling, you know, and it was such a, a, a production. It was a really good show. I was kind of surprised. Um, and then, gosh, I mean, anytime you see a band like the dead at Wrigley, it, I mean, that, that it's a, it's kind of a big deal. I mean, it, it's so, so much money is poured into that. The sound is great. You know, it's just entertaining. There's fireworks. Um, any big- Yeah, have you, seen, have you seen other bands there? Cause I know they've done a lot of- Yeah, there. I actually saw a country band there um, and the name escapes me. And I went with friends. It was like, hey, you want to go? I'm like, yeah, I'll go. It'll be fun. Cause I'm with all of you. Um, mm -hmm. I don't know who it was though. I can't think of the name. Um, I've, I've seen fish there. That was fun. Um, oh, that's gosh, I saw Pearl Jam, I think twice at Wrigley. And I've once I was there like, a couple times. Yeah. And once there was a, like one the earlier time, I think it was a huge rainstorm. And, um, I think there was like a two or three hour delay. And if you left, you, you couldn't re, you couldn't re-enter. Oh, so wow. we, we stuck it out. And I guess Rahm Emanuel was the the mayor at the time and, and he allowed the show to go on because uh you know it, we were I mean we had to you had to it, we just got poured on you had to leave you had to like at least leave your seat you, you know you didn't yeah. really <laughs> yeah um yeah and I remember the, the show went fairly late and uh after the afterwards I, there were no cabs I couldn't I'm like I don't know how so I just walked home I think I got home like three in the morning <laughs> but it was fun that's great yeah i love that i that's one band that has eluded me i have never seen pearl jam in concert and yeah i'd like to i i will say that um we and maybe we talked about this before um i know i was telling somebody about it but uh john and i saw chris cornell uh several years ago and I just remember sort of dorkily as a speech language pathologist being absolutely fascinated by his voice oh his voice is outstanding the clarity yeah. that he has in his voice like I mean because he was you know uh, maybe late 40s or 50 at the time um and I just remember thinking, and you know, and you spend your life singing like that. I mean, right. You usually end up with like vocal nodules or something that cracks you down a little bit. And, but that was, that concert blew me away because I just had never 
heard anyone with the voice like that. And, yeah. and that was absolutely amazing. He, he was an amazing um, artist in his own right with many aspects of um, the bands that he was in and stuff, but just his voice alone, I felt like was like, wow, that just, mm -hmm. that blew me away. So what, what's, what's the time that you have that similar, like that just blew you away where you were like, wow, that's, that's what it's um, all about. Well, Simon and Garfunkel, I think I saw at the Breslin Center. <laughs> Really? Yeah, I think it was the bro. It was somewhere in Michigan State's camp. In high school, or um, I think it was right out of high school. Maybe, uh, maybe I was in high school. Maybe it was like our senior year. I don't. I can't recall. I'd probably have to Google it. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I just I remember just thinking, "Wow, this is this is an amazing concert." I remember mm -hmm. they played Cecilia, and that was super, just really fun. I just really got into it. Um, yeah. yeah, I've probably been blown away a few times though. Um, gosh, uh, I'm trying to think Lollapalooza. I don't know when it was like probably a decade ago. I haven't gone to Lollapalooza in years. It's too hot and I'm too old. Um, but it was, uh, gosh, ah, I cannot think of the band's name. Yeah, I'll, it'll come to me. I'll have to skip this. Sorry, Karen. I, <laughs> okay. I, I lost, the, I lost my train of thought. That's okay. <laughs> I think, um, you, you know, it's probably a really good thing to have been to so many great shows that they kind of run together a little bit. So. <laughs> yeah, well, it was, it was a band I'd only seen this one time and I remember just being really moved by it. Oh man. Yeah. Ugh, I, I don't remember. It cl cl clearly had an impact. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think so that there, there have been times too for me where I'm like, oh, what was that band that we saw that was so good and like they were so much fun and then John and I are both like, yeah, I don't It's know. remembered. Explosions okay. in the sky. Which Explosions I don't, okay. yeah, I don't think I ever saw them again or anything, uh -huh. but I really had, I mean, that show, it was like a mid-afternoon show too. Maybe it was just the beautiful weather too, but it was so great. I loved it. And I also, uh, I'd be, be remiss to not include Wilco. I've never not yeah. had a good time at a Wilco show. Um, yeah. yeah. And I think I saw them that same year, that same Lollapalooza, but I've seen them numerous times or, you know, they're, they're a Chicago band. <laughs> but, yeah, yeah. The, I think, um, yeah, a lot, I had, a, I remember having a lot of people tell me like, you, you should listen to Wilco, you would like them. And like years ago when I was like, oh, okay. And I was like, oh, you're right. Yeah, I like them. <laughs> um, I think that's what's great about the festivals is finding bands that are kind of new on the scene. And all of a sudden you're like, hey, wait a minute. They're really good. Like, I, I like that aspect. We used to go out to the gorge here, oh, which is a great, gorgeous, uh, gorgeous uh, <laughs> venue. Um, and uh, for a couple different types of festivals, music festivals and stuff. And it was the first time we saw, uh, do you know My Morning Jacket? Oh yeah. Yeah, so we saw them there years and years ago on like they were on this little tiny side stage in the middle of the day yeah and john was like we i think uh, i went to the bathroom or something and he was like you you have got to come over to the side stage and check these guys out because they are yeah. awesome yeah and we went over and we stood there and there were like 10 people standing around in the field watching them oh <laughs> they were playing their hearts out like for like 10 people and so I was always happy to see the success that they had because they were they were so good. Um, what um, you know, if, if if you could be a part of any band, what band would you want to be a part of? Like, given the personalities in the band and the type of music, like if you could just hop in and play an instrument and be a part of a band. Oh, you mean 
like, oh goodness. Yeah. Oh, I am not musically inclined at all. Oh, <laughs> um, hmm. You can play the tambourine or something. You don't have to do anything like fancy. Yeah, that's still something. <laughs> um, <laughs> oh, goodness. Triangle, triangle, whatever you want. Yeah. Ugh. I mean, maybe just Mo because I know them. Like, I don't know them, but um, I know, like, I've formed so many friendships through that band, just going to see them so many times that it would be cool just to, you know, see some other friends a lot more. <laughs> um, yeah, and in what capacity, like, what could I do? Oof, I, I, <laughs> I don't know. I guess I would be a tambourine player. <laughs> Did you, you never played a musical instrument? No, I sucked. I took keyboarding in like sixth grade. That was horrible. I tried singing. I cannot carry a tune or a note. No, I mm. love music. In college, I was a DJ. I don't know if I shared that yes. with you. <laughs> oh, didn't you, didn't you DJ at high school? Too? Oh yeah, I was. Uh, what was it? W A R Warren A Richards. Was I was like, yeah, yeah. Like yes. Yeah, the rotation of like Margaritaville and like Brown Eyed Girl, <laughs> the usual over the PA <laughs> system. Yeah. <laughs> yes, I was like, it was very welcoming to walk in the school and hear your voice in the morning. <laughs> Yeah, well, that continued in, in college. I had a little radio show called Jendi's Bend Musical Booty. Um, I was on Marquette's campus up in uh, mm -hmm. Marquette, Michigan, Northern Michigan University. Um, my time slot was not good. It was early morning. Um, uh -huh. I, <laughs> there was a federal prison nearby, and so I had a, a, a good fan base. <laughs> I would get fan letters. From yeah, an inmate. <laughs> wasn't 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 it that am I am 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 I remembering things in a crazy way? But wasn't like there? I feel like you had told me once that some of the dorms at Northern had been. Oh no, that was at Grand been, Valley. Oh, that was at DB, right? The, yeah, and yeah, the hallways would like zigzag. So they were they curved. Like, make it fit. Right. So like if you were in bars, you couldn't see down the hallway. <laughs> I still have that memory of you telling me about that because I was like, that is fascinating. Yeah. <laughs> so wait, so you so you DJed up there and what did you do that the whole time you were up there? No, I, I like think that? I did it like one year maybe. Okay. Yeah. It was I mean it was fun. It was completely fun. Did um, you ever think about this as a career? No, I don't like to talk. I don't like to be on air. I get nervous. No, I don't. I don't like public speaking at all. Even this is like, ugh. um, but uh, no, I, no, I would have to. Like, yeah, I would have to. You know, do the station identification at the top of the hour, and no, I just like to play music. That was my thing. I, you know, every once yeah. in a while when I had to, I would, you know do the, the station ID, any type of PSA that was, you know, mandatory. Um, I'd introduce a song or two, but other than that, nope. <laughs> Just, yeah, play the music. Play and... the tunes, yep. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so last, last kind of thought here, what, uh, do you have like a, what, what would be a playlist for you to get you feeling better during the pandemic? Like maybe like three songs, like to get up and feel better about what's coming during the day. Oh goodness. What's your playlist for that? Okay. Sorry, I should have prepared you for this. <laughs> no, that's fine. Um, I love every little thing she does is magic by the police. I think that'll always get people moving and it has to put you in a happy, happy place. Um, yeah. Let's think. Probably any tune by New Order. 
<laughs> mm-hmm. um, and then I guess to go back to Herbie Hancock, Fat Mama, just a good yeah. instrumental, like, yeah. Great. yeah. That's what I would go with um, right now. You could ask me in an hour, it might be different. <laughs> no. <laughs> I, think, I think I'm going to queue those up on YouTube for me tomorrow and just yes. start my day like that. That's, I tend to start my day with a, with a song like on my headphones, like I'll just put something on and be like, all right, here we go. <laughs> well, I think a good day, like a good day starter is, um, is it Bob O'Reilly by The Who? Just the intro to that song. Yes. I oh mean, my gosh, that does have the best. Oh my gosh. Yeah. I kind of forgot about that song. And I like, you know, years ago when I was rehabbing my knee after I injured it, uh, I had to do the, um, the ladder at P at physical therapy, just like you had to like, you know, in, in, out, out. And that song came on at the, at the facility. And I was like, this is the best song ever to just get your feet moving. You know, like, I think it helps. (laughs) Music helps. So it does. I love that. I, um, it's good for me to have some ideas of some new stuff. Cause I tend to fall back on like my favorites, which, uh, kind of in a saccharine way, I love, uh, brand new day by sting. Mm. That that's kind of, that's one that I always like will put on in the morning and I'm like, all right, here we go. Brand new day. And so I, it's, I take it a little too literally, but <laughs> but yeah, but so I need a new, I need a new lineup. So I just wrote down the ones that you said. And so I'll start my day tomorrow with those. So. I'll shoot you a message with others as I come, as they come to me. Okay. There are so I many know. more, you know? So. <laughs> I know. Thanks, Jendi. I really oh, appreciate you doing thank this. You. Fun. It's good to <laughs> see you again. <laughs> I know. I'm so glad to see you too. And um, I, I really hope everything turns out okay with school so yeah I mean so 